that. Now, Saudi Arabia is not exactly known as a tourist destination, but the kingdom is setting out to change that. As part of efforts to increase tourism to the reclusive country, tourists can now apply for a visa to visit. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman says they will also ease the strict dress code for foreign women, allowing them to go without the body shrouding robe that is mandatory public wear for Saudi women, but foreign women will still be required to wear modest clothing. Joining me now for more on this is Own Khari, editor of Travel Extra. Own, firstly, what kind of tourism sector does Saudi Arabia have at the moment? Uh, good evening. It actually does really, really well out of tourism. The main reason being that it is the home of the holiest sites in Islam. So, you know, well, if you look at the number of visitors Saudi Arabia gets, it's right up there. It uh, barely can cope with the numbers, the millions that come through. They get about uh, six million on pilgrimage. And uh, in the month of August this year, it'll be July next year for the Hajj, about two million of those will be coming through. So um, over come are they by this event that they have to ration the places they're enormously expensive um, each country gets a, a ration of the number of, of um, visitors by the population of the uh, Muslim population within the country Ireland for instance gets 500 and enormously expensive it costs about 15,000 to go from Ireland obviously they want to build something a little bit more um, broader a broader base out of that and they've made making this pitch for uh, more conventional tourism, but I'm not sure if there's much more to it than a publicity stunt. Why? Um, it's, it, it's still going to be awkward to get to. Um, the visa will be expensive by comparison with what's going on around it. I suspect what they're doing is they're looking at what's happening in all those smaller states to, its, uh, to the east. Uh, Dubai has been immensely successful. Abu Dhabi has been great, is successful. Qatar has been ex uh, successful. Bahrain, Kuwait. And they're sort of saying, maybe we could get a little slice of this action. But I think with the cost of the visa and with the, uh, the difficulties, uh, the access won't be a problem because so many strong airlines fly through the Middle East. But the other difficulties will be um, overcoming um, that perception of Saudi Arabia as being a dark and forbidding place, uh, even if they relax the dress code. Yeah, and, and on the dress code, I think women in particular may have reservations about going to visit. Uh, what would it be like for them practically there on the ground for women? It's not. It's, uh, I was in Iran, which is uh, Saudi's uh, arch enemy, two weeks ago. It will not be that different. Iran is quite a successful uh, tourist uh, industry, and what they require of Western women since the Islamic Revolution is 40 years ago is that they w cover their heads. It, it, it can be a brightly coloured scarf. It would be something that would be familiar to older listeners from what would have happened in churches in Ireland in the 1950s. Um, what I suspect Saudi Arabia are seeking is something similar and they will be bringing people into their country to see um, some of their their archaeological uh, sites. They've applied for a large number of resorts along the Red Sea, Red Sea diving, all of those sort of things that are done uh, off Egypt and uh, from, the, from the, the other side of the Gulf as well. They'll be looking into all of those areas and they won't make it too difficult in terms of dress code but they still uh, will have to overcome the, co you know, the fact that it is 100, year, 100 euro effectively to get the visa. It's not going to be visa on arrival and the sort of free travel we associate with other countries in the region. But they do have um, a part of, you know, Dubai and Abu Dhabi are very modern products. They're very, very blingy. A lot of people like that about them. Uh, the product that they will be offering will be something closer to what you would see in Oman, for instance with Muscat, with the ancient forts and the archaeological remains to the north of the country, which compare with those that you'd find in Jordan. So would you recommend it, Owen, do you reckon? Oh, and definitely. Balance? There's going to be a curiosity uh, factor here and uh, it would be, a, you know, for all of those people who collect countries, myself included, I'll definitely be very, very interested going in. They did have two openings 
uh, to Western tourists uh, before. We had long, had long discussions with this with government ministers and tourism officials at the big uh, tourist affairs, which uh, are in London in November and in Berlin in March. And they told me how they were opening up tourism. So this, for me, is about the third time round. I suspect um, it's probably prompted by um, the world, the dynamics of the region where um, there's a, they're getting an awful lot of coverage for the war in Yemen, for instance, and um, the unfortunate uh, track record of um, Mohammed uh, bin um, Saddam, since he came to power or effectively seized power or was brought to power. So the Western tourists, attracting Western tourists is sort of a, largely a gesture to say, OK, we're not the bad guys. Uh, try and come and see for yourself. All right. Well, some people, as you say, may be tempted. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on that. That's own Corrie, editor of Travel Extra.